Miss Gunther is leading 6-2, 5-love, 40-love in the sixth game of the second set. The placement for Mr. Nancy Richie Gunther is still at match point. It was triple match point. It is now double match point. First serve is long. It was wide. Nancy Ritchie with a backhand down the line and it was wide. It is still match point for Nancy Ritchie Gunter. Mister's backhand was wide. Nancy Ritchie Gunter wins 6 2, 6 love. Cheerleaders and everybody that I miss, we like to say we are proud to know the fact that we are we are representing Dallas. And so as you can see, we are all together now. Right on. Right on. We plan to go to Austin. They say we don't know where it is. But well, we've been there. We've been there. We plan to go to Austin and represent you the only way we know how and still be number one when we return. We don't plan, you know, to come back with our head hung low. We've made it this far. I don't see why we should stop now. A lot of people said they weren't surprised. I was surprised because I thought that maybe he would really get his program together and have a good year here. And I thought maybe all the rough spots were over and he was going to be here for a while. And the acquisition of younger players, pitchers, you know, you know I look at it and I say, blah, but you, know, <laughs> you look at it and that's, that's, you know, it's really good. It's just going to be a good, good team in a few years. Well, it, it would certainly appear to those of us who are not that familiar with the ball club, but particularly the pitching staff, as young as all of you are, is, uh, is going to be a strong one in years to come. I hope so. It's got to be. I mean, we've got hard throwers and more experience and more finesse and we, we should have a good staff. Are you looking forward at all to the to the move or as a pro you just play where you can? Well I haven't been a pro that long. I am looking forward to the move because Washington Stadium I enjoyed yet it was too hot and it was too humid and the team, well the town, they didn't love us till after we left. You know, <laughs> so I, it's hard to play before no one.
a service at the Dallas Public Library that not a great many people know about. As a newsman, I know about it because it saves me hours of effort, and it makes me sound like I know a great deal more than I really do. In the last year, the Dallas Public Library answered 1,187,604 questions. I know because I asked their research department to look it up for me. The service is a telephone reference service. You can get almost any question answered here on the telephone. Do you wish to know the time from that part of the chandelier that passes the wax drippings from the candle? An art gallery had called. It needed the proper term for that catcher of wax. Yes, you want to know the particulars of a picnic given by Louis XV? Yes, the caller was Taka. They wanted to duplicate the menu and the decor of a Louis XV picnic for a fundraising dinner. You wish to know the Arabic words transliterated into our alphabet for the words dynamite and lightning. All right. A horse lover had called. After all, if you're going to name your horse dynamite or lightning, it would sound better in Arabic. A little bit like calling your dog Fido, spelled P-H-A-I-D-E-A-U-X. This is Richard Waters. He's chief of the Central Library in Dallas. Mr. Waters, do other cities have a reference service, a telephone reference service such as Dallas? Most major public libraries across the country do, Don. We like to think that perhaps in Dallas we go an extra mile and try to give all possible service we can over the telephone to save the Dallasite time and money in his informational needs. How much does a service like this cost the city? It doesn't cost the person who calls anything, right? No, it's a free service. Uh, as a tax-supported institution, he's paying for it indirectly through his taxes. As far as our public service units are concerned, we have a direct cost for personnel and materials of about a million dollars per year, and then some indirect costs that are hard to measure, like utilities and things of that nature. Are most of your callers uh, people looking for the addresses of movie stars, or do they have a serious and, and definite use for the information? The great majority, I would say 99% of them, are serious information seekers, whether it's related to their business needs or their educational needs. Uh, they're, they're serious questions. They're things that they need to know and usually need to know right now, not tomorrow, but right this moment. Much of the information is stored on microfilm. When the call comes in, the appropriate reel is pulled and put into a special viewer. You can either read the information of a copy of the New York Times or some other reference source, or have it printed out. The librarians will look it up for you free of charge. The copies cost 10 cents a page. And so the questions pour in. Better than a million a year to the Dallas Public Library Telephone Reference Service. They won't answer questions regarding legal or medical opinions, and they won't give you the correct answer to fill in the entry blank in the latest soap contest. But other than that, their business is information, and they'll answer almost any question you want. Give them a call sometime. Just tell them Harris sent you. They'll probably give you the answer anyway. My name's Harris, Channel 8 News on the Move at the Dallas Public Library. You know, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, we have a lot of we have a lot of things to do. Uh, these rules here have to be adopted by the fifth of April, and here it is, the thirteenth of March, and we're still. We're, uh, I've gotten a copy of the Brunson rules. I haven't even gotten a copy of the Anderson rules as modified. And why he hasn't called this and and said to the state Democratic Executive Committee, you come and be prepared to stay here five days so we can get this done. I can't understand.
I'm saying president is is unavailable. He's a is uh, uh, not a perfectly unavailable? No, no, sir. I'm you don't sure feel like the just, Christ of the Black School is not important, right? Well, I'm, I'm sure he just had. The president had prior commitments, I'm sure. Oh, well, the only institution is no commitment to him, right? I say he has prior commitments. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Jack, what did you see on Westbury? Well, I was over at the wreck, and uh, I went into the store, and uh, saw the policeman run up the street, and I ran out real quick, and he looked in the store, I mean in the bank, and then he took off for the drugstore, and we went up there, and uh, when they come outside, they had the gun to the woman's chest, and he told, told everybody, he said, this here's the bank hold up, everybody get back. How close were you at that time? About 50 foot or less from me. Did he point a gun at you? No, he just had kept to the woman's chest right here. How many men did you see? I saw one come out, two come out of the bank, and one was sitting in the car. What was the woman hostage doing at the time? Was she, did she act pretty frightened? Yeah, she was frightened, but she was playing it real cool. She was doing everything they said to do. And uh, there was a woman coming up the side of the bank, it looked like, and they grabbed her and put her in the car, too. Were there any shots fired at all? I didn't hear any at all. Those related to skyjacking? No, we don't think so. As a matter of fact, we're strongly of the opinion that um, bombers and skyjackers are two totally different breeds of cats. Uh, if there be a thread of connection between them, the thread would be that of extortion uh, by force and for the possible gain of large amounts of money using an aircraft as, as a, a hostage but the principle is totally different and the two should never be combined in the public's mind because they're not one and the same.